In this video, I'll cover three shape tools, star, spiral, and common shapes. Before we get started, if you're watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also find a written version of this tutorial. All three tools can be found in the Shape Tools flyout. To open this flyout, I'll click the small triangle at the lower right corner of the polygon icon, or whatever icon appears below the ellipse icon. I'll begin with star. The property bar displays the default outline width and line style for all graphic elements, which can be changed for a shape once it's created. I can also set the number of star sides and choose whether to create a simple or complex star. I'll start with a simple star. Either type of star is created by clicking and dragging from one corner to the opposite corner of its bounding rectangle. Pressing and holding the shift key while dragging the mouse creates a star from its center. Holding the control key or command on the Mac creates a star with all sides equal, and I can hold both keys to draw an identical sided star from its center. Once created, the star has eight sizing handles all around and an X at its center. Corner handles can be dragged to resize while maintaining the aspect ratio, and side handles can stretch or narrow. Clicking and dragging the X moves the star, and keeping the shift key pressed constrains the move to be horizontal or vertical. When I click on the X, the sizing handles become rotation handles, which can be used to rotate or skew the star. The star center is now a circular pivot point, which I can click and drag to a different spot, and now this point is the center of rotation. Clicking the pivot point brings back the X and the sizing handles. As long as a star's handles are displayed, I can change outline width, line style, left click a color swatch to add a solid fill, and right click a color swatch to set the outline color. I can also change the number of sides and adjust the sharpness of the points. I can also use the object position fields in the property bar to place the star. By default, the X and Y coordinates here define the location of the X at the star center. But I can also choose a different reference point, like the top left corner of the bounding rectangle, and specify that point's coordinates. When I use the object size fields to specify width and height, the reference point remains in place while other points move accordingly. The same applies for the scale factor fields, which reflect the change from the star's original dimensions. If I change either percentage, the reference point stays in place. I can also enter a rotation angle. A complex star is created just like a simple star, but has intersecting sides. If I want to make changes to a star that isn't selected, I first need to select it. I can select any star while the star or other shape tool is active, or I can press the spacebar to temporarily activate the pick tool, which I can use to select the star. The shape tool can be used to transform a complex star into a much more interesting shape. With this complex star selected, I'll click the shape icon, which is just below the pick tool. There are now nodes at each tip and at the midpoint of each side. Clicking and dragging any node produces the same result at every corner or side. With the control or command key pressed, each node remains the same distance from its adjacent nodes, or without this key, I can drag nodes to twist the shape. I can even drag nodes inward, with or without the modifier key, to get an overlapping star shape. With this complex star, I can use the shape tool to make things even more interesting. I can double click on an edge to add a node, which adds similar nodes on all edges, and change the star even further. Double clicking a node removes it, along with the similar nodes on other edges. I can also select a node and click Convert to Curve in the property bar. Now I can adjust tangency at both ends of the line segment and add more curved nodes by double clicking. If I want to adjust individual nodes without maintaining even sides and corners, I can press the spacebar to temporarily switch to the pick tool, which selects the star. Now I can click Convert to Curves, press the spacebar again to go back to the shape tool, and adjust individual nodes. I can also drag a selection marquee around multiple nodes to move them together. Using the shape tool on a simple star displays nodes where points meet, and dragging nodes keeps the star a star, or I can keep going outward until I have a polygon. 
The Spiral tool is located just below the Star tool in the Flyout group and has the A shortcut on the PC. There are two spiral options, symmetrical, in which the revolutions are spaced evenly, and logarithmic, where spacing increases as the spiral progresses outward. Either type of spiral is created by clicking and dragging from one corner to the opposite corner of its bounding rectangle. Pressing and holding the Shift key while dragging the mouse creates a spiral from its center. Holding the Control or Command key creates a circular spiral, and I can hold both keys to draw a circular spiral from its center. As with all selected shapes, I can drag the X to move the spiral, and the handles can be used to resize, stretch, rotate, or skew. The property bar has options to change the number of revolutions or set the spiral expansion factor in the case of a logarithmic spiral. But note that changing these fields will affect the next spiral I draw, not the currently selected one. A spiral is an open curve by default, whose outline color can be set by right-clicking a color swatch. In the property bar, I can set the line weight or style, add arrowheads, or close the curve. Using the Shape tool on a spiral displays curve nodes at each quadrant, which in this example can be adjusted to make the curve appear more organic. As before, I can double-click to add nodes or remove nodes or marquee select a group of nodes. Finally, we have the Common Shapes tool that is used to draw predefined closed shapes. The Common Shapes picker appears in the drop-down in the property bar and includes five types, basic shapes, arrows, flowchart shapes, banners, and callouts. These shapes are created by dragging from corner to corner of their bounding rectangle. Holding the Shift key draws from the center, Holding Control or Command keeps the shape's original proportions, and holding both keys does both. As with other shapes, handles can be used to resize, stretch, rotate, or skew, and the X can be used for moving. And as before, I can fill a common shape by clicking a color swatch, right-click a swatch to set the outline color, and adjust line weight and style. With a few exceptions, most common shapes have one or more glyphs that can be dragged to adjust the shape. The Shape tool generally does not provide nodes for editing common shapes, but I can right-click and convert a shape to curves, after which there are more nodes for editing. Finally, it's easy to add text to a common shape or to any closed shape. I'll click the Text tool which has three types of cursors. With the A cursor, I can click inside the shape to create artistic text. This text isn't linked to the shape, but if I want them to act as a single object, I can select both objects with the Pick tool and click Group Objects. If I click when the text cursor is along an edge and has a curve symbol, the text will be artistic text that follows that edge. And if I click just inside the edge, when the cursor has a dotted grid symbol, I'm creating paragraph text that fits the shape. If I select and move the shape, both the text along curve and the paragraph text inside move along with it. This brings us to the end of this tutorial on the star, spiral, and common shapes tools in Corel Draw. If you've been watching this video on YouTube, you'll find a link in the description below that will take you to our tutorial page on Corel's Discovery Center. Here you can also view a written version of this tutorial.